my god it is hot today is almost 100 degrees i think the temperature said 96 but with the heat index it's 104. tropical tropical and we're standing in direct sunlight hence the sunglasses and the umbrella we're back in mount dora in search of the catacombs the hidden catacombs from 1961. this time we have a new clue we just may have found it So I'm not going to go ahead and give you a whole other history lesson of what the catacombs are bait dating back to 1961. Instead, we're going to provide you with this handy little flashback. In 1959, a book came out called Alas Babylon, and inside it, it described in almost great detail what it would be like in the aftermath of a nuclear war. The main town in the book was modeled after Mount Dora, the town that we're currently in, and cities like Tampa, Orlando, and Miami were completely destroyed. This scared the crap out of the people who lived here in Mount Dora. So much in fact that a lot of the families, the most prominent families, families with money, got together, pulled their money, and built a bomb shelter, which is rumored to be the biggest, the largest in the entire country. It's here somewhere. To this day, the whereabouts, the address is unknown. We're going to try to find it. So if you haven't guessed it by now, Jessica and I, when it comes to researching Grim Life locations, we are pretty adamant and pretty crazy about our research. And in research of this, we've been doing it nonstop, it feels like it's kind of become like a Grim Life obsession. We found out that back in 1961, there was a portion of Mount Dora called the Sylvan Shores, which is where we are right now. We touched on it in the, briefly in the past video, but in the 60s, it was an, an unincorporated area of Mount Dora. And it just so happens that there is an orange grove right smack dab in the middle of this place, which is awesome because it's privately owned, the shelter. The government didn't know about it. It wasn't funded by the government. So it would make sense that the people, the wealthy people of Mount Dora would build this in an unincorporated area of it. Last time we were here in Mount Dora, we spent all of our time over at this orange grove searching the houses and the surrounding area and found nothing. This time, however, we're going to be searching this orange grove. What we find out about this one is it's separated into six separate areas. The one on the bottom right hand side, that little square, seems a little out of place, doesn't it? Weirder still, and what has piqued our interest is the house that is right there along the border and that small section of the orange grove share the same address. In real life, the orange groves that I was just showing on the maps are right here. We're standing pretty much right in the middle of it. Further down that road, you will find the entrance to the orange groves and it's divided into three parts. On one on equal sides, or both sides of this highway. One, two, three, four. Now directly across from where we are right now is an orange grove. But what's interesting is directly right across the street from it is an empty lot. And as if to fuel our interest even more, if you look straight ahead in the middle of your screen behind that tree line, there's a hill of some sorts. Could that be the catacombs? The guy who built the catacombs did say that whenever they were building it, there were so many people that were asking, hey, what are you doing here? And he would tell them that he was building a tennis court or a croquet court because they didn't want the general public to know. Do know that it is buried underneath an orange grove. They said six feet. And you know what, that hill kind of looks like it's six feet tall, doesn't it? So our plan right now is to walk around the orange grove perimeter, well, that right there behind those trees and see if we can find a way in. We parked our car over that way towards an apartment complex and we're gonna go up to the orange grove itself and go right down this dirt path to see if there's any entrance way into that thicket. I guess that's what it's called, a thicket, right? I'm not sure. It's not brush. What it looks like is that orange trees were planted on top of that hill. We've seen fallen fruit and over time it has become impassable with limbs. So it's not soft brush that you just push through. 
it is tree branches. So we will see. I'm gonna lose my mind if we find an entrance or something that looks like an entrance. It's very particularly odd that this formation is here. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's walk it. Jessica's got her umbrella to keep the sun off of her. And tractor, I mean, so it could just be that somebody was working here. Yeah. That's the orange groves right there. Straight on down. Just so much sand. If you see any kind of entrance, call it out. I, I'd prefer not to go climbing over top of any of this. That looks like people may have pushed a path inward there, but it's not a set path. Palm trees. Palm trees in the wild. Oh man, that's crazy. Watch out for spiders and snakes. I don't see the hill Right? The back of the hill that we think could very well be the catacombs, the entrance to the storm shelter, the nuclear fallout shelter, I should say, does come up on somebody's property here. We were unable to find I see a white formation, but I can't tell if it's who the property owners are. I don't see anything back there, back there, though. Gotta find a different way in. It is incredibly hot out. You know, you think 100 degrees, it's, you know, oh, it's hot, but it can't be that bad. Well, here the humidity is what puts it over 100 degrees. It's not even the humidity. It's the tropical sun. It's the UV rays. The, the air is so clean here that it just cuts right through. There's no um, pollution down here. And I mean, because of where we're in, you know, in Florida. So even just me having sandals on and walking in the sun, I'm burning my feet as we walk. So by the time we're done walking today, I'm going to have sunburn on my feet with a pattern. You would think that the entrance to the catacombs would be facing somebody's property. So in all actuality, if we do find them, we're coming in from behind it on top of the hill. So if we can get at least get to the very top of it, maybe we can look down somebody's property level and see if we can see anything. Oh God, a little bit of shade. I'm sweating. Yeah. How are you faring, Jessica? Watch I out for the ants. I haven't been in a temperature like this in a long time. And I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, where we get extreme heat during our summer. We lose a lot of people because of the heat index and the humidity. And this is right up there, if not worse. <laughs> So the next viable option is to go straight up the hill here. I tried to avoid it because it's right on the main street, but it looks like I can get up to the top fairly easily. Oh, brother. All right, fair enough. i give you an idea. Jessica, where are you at? There she is. So I'm up here. It's flat, there's nothing up here. And I guess we're just gonna be looking for any kind of sign. This is weird. Any kind of sign that there might be something man-made underneath but all in all like as you can see 
But as you can see, where the tree line is, that's about the extent of this hill. And it pretty much drops off too. Hey, it's pretty steep. Something had to have put it here. Could I right now be standing on top of the catacombs here in Mount Dora? And it's overgrown, but if this is it, it was put here in 1961. The house, the entrance should be back that way. That's a wire. Why is there a wire leading into the ground? There's a wire leading into the ground. There's a lot of wires leading to the trees. What the heck? If I fall. <laughs> Getting really fucking creepy. Excuse my language. But there's a tent. Why is there a tent up here? That's just disturbing. It doesn't look like anybody's been here for a while though. Is that a hose? No. All right, tent, creepy, big tall grass. Please don't let me get bit by a snake. I kid you not, if I hear a snake, I'm out of here. First glance, I don't see anything that could be a, an entrance. I mean, if I have to climb down there, I will. These weeds are getting higher and higher and higher. I'm gonna call Jessica. She's all the way over there. I'm gonna call her let her know I'm going down, down the other side. See if she picks up. Hey, sorry. So I'm on the other side. I'm getting ready to walk down towards the bottom. Um, in the center up here, there's a tent. Like an old tent, like somebody was living here, like a homeless person. Nobody's been here for a while, but. Yeah, up here there's a there's a there's a clearing. Um, you can probably get up or quick if you want, but there's a there's probably like shoulder length weeds right now that I'm standing in. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna try to get down. Like, it looks like I can get straight down, and then I'm gonna come right back up if I don't see anything. All right. I will, baby girl. I love you. This is a bit of a steeper hill than I would like it to be. But, whoa. Crouching down, it's just all sand. Whoa, sliding down, sliding down. Turning around, not seeing any entrance. 
I feel like I'm in a tropical jungle. It's nice to get out of the shade, I mean out of the sun and into the shade for a little bit. Straight ahead, you can see that white tool shed right there. It's on somebody's property. Still no signs. What the hell's with this? It's concrete. So I'm not seeing anything at all. It would have been really cool if we would have found something in the hillside that was like, I don't know, an entrance or something boarded up. All right, so I came out the other side. We're parked almost right on the other side of those trees. So I'm gonna go get Jessica. We're gonna walk that way. It's interesting that we come out right next to this planned subdivision, these apartment homes. We're parked right ahead. Here comes Jessica. So, the reason why she didn't climb up on the hill with me is because she's got sandals. Sadly, we did not find the entrance to the catacombs this time, but we did explore another theory as to where it could be. Ultimately, it turned out to be our theory. I haven't seen anybody else write anything online about this, but walking around there, did not find a noticeable entrance into the hillside, which is odd that it's there. But we did find that there's like a white shed. I mean, it seemed rather small, but I mean, I, I don't know, it's hard to tell. I mean, back then, I mean, a lot has happened since 1961 when yeah. it was built. So in the pictures that we saw, like Jessica was pointing out, the pictures look like you can actually walk inside and open this giant door. Yeah, because I mean, if you're going to pull these giant storm doors, a lot of people had cellar doors, uh, storm doors, so you would reach down, pull them up, and they open to about my waist high, and they stay open. And then the structure that these doors seem to be in um, looks tall enough for someone to be standing inside at full height as an adult. So I'm not sure about a tiny shed, but you know, they could have demolished the original standing structure and made something smaller so no one can actually go into it. That's a possibility too. Before we left, I wanted to take a look at the house that has that shed in question to see what it looked like on the front. So right now we're on, it was this Northland Street, right? Northland Road. And this house right here, behind it, it has that white shed that we were looking at. Straight back there, you will see, right, just right past the house, there is a two-door shed that looks like it's pretty overgrown. Does it? Mm. We can't tell from right here if there's a lock on it, like Jessica was saying. Can you zoom in far enough to see if that's brick, the structure's brick? It, it looks like maybe it's like some sort of wood paneling. Doesn't mean it's not but, there. so it's a lot bigger than what I thought it was well, on the other side when I said it was really small. I mean, that's yeah. big enough for oh, yeah. a door. Because in the, in the picture, you see the two uh, storm cellar doors open and there's only so, there's about maybe that much room from the one door you see to the wall. It's not very much at all. So it may be a structure just like this that only encompasses the entrance and nothing else. Yeah. And if you walk this way, you can see that the family has another shed that they actually use. It, it has actually right not there. a shed. It's a, um, a fenced in area. A lanai. A lanai. Crazy. That's pretty wild. You know what? I, I think that's it. I, th I think that has to be the entrance to the catacombs. 
So the front door is open. I mean, should we knock and ask? Is that kind of weird? It might be weird. What is odd to me, though, is he was prominent in society. All the families who built this were prominent in society. So why would you have the entrance on someone else's property? Now, the entrance was on somebody else's property, but it was 25 of Mount Dora's most prominent, richest families that did this. There was enough for 100 people. Right, and I mean, so, it's been 50 years now, so this neighborhood would not be considered an upscale neighborhood. This would be a working class neighborhood now, but it may had had a different standing back then, or the person they decided to build a, on their property was just maybe the least suspecting of all of them that people would go and try to figure out where this was. Yeah, a guy by the name of Parks was the guy who construction designed it and built it. Hall was the guy who said we need to do this. He's pretty much the guy who spearheaded it. But then there was three other very well-known wealthy people that were behind it. They weren't part of the 25. Like I said, we just got to figure out who owns this house or who owned this house back in 1961. Well, we can see if anyone is home and just say hello. Want to go knock on the door? Let's go knock on the door. Sure. So that was an interesting conversation. Basically, we got in our car and we drove further down the street. The house that we were just at was a couple blocks that way. We rang the guy's doorbell. It was a much older gentleman. Very older gentleman, yeah. He opened the door. He refused to say anything. He would. He barely he, talked at all. He said no. He didn't hear anything about it, but... He did have a little smirk. He did have a bit of a smirk, but then he followed us to the end of his driveway and stood there in his socks and crossed his arms and watched until we got into our car. Yeah, or else we'd be doing this piece right there, but out of respect, we decided to leave a little bit and still talk about it. We talked to yeah. the mailman. Because we don't want anyone to cross onto his property either. Right. I mean, we, we're not here to trespass on property. We don't want people to trespass on his property, so we're not going to give out the address or anything like that. I did give out the address. I gave out the address. It, it is what it is. But we left. We, we left. We, we, we didn't start anything. We didn't be like, are you sure? We just asked him a simple question. Are you sure if you, you, know, you haven't heard anything, any of the stories? And then I had pointed out the mound behind the house, well, the so man-made mound. His response didn't change. It no. was the exact same. No, it didn't. It didn't. But that was someone who definitely didn't want us on their property. But at the same time, I mean, most people don't, you know. Most people would be like, well, even if it's not here, I don't want you snooping around my house because this is my house. So I understand that. But it was his, his behavior was a little bit suspicious, that's all. Before we head home, we thought we'd stop at the Village Antique Mall here in Mount Dora. It is our favorite thrift store, Antique Mall, here. And inside, it has something a little creepy right up our alley. Something grim. Ultimately, what has drawn us to this place are these gargoyles guarding their front door. My God, I wonder if they have these things for sale. Can you imagine these? Can you imagine these in front of our house? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They are beautiful. Just look at that. Look at those wings. Oh my God. Let's go around back and take a look at these wings back here, the wingspan. Holy crap, just look at the detail of this thing. It's like walking into a spider web. Oh man. Oh, let's go inside and see what they got. Believe it or not, I'm gonna go ahead and say that this antique mall is probably the spookiest place in all of Mount Dora, mainly because they actually have a real life coffin. And they have this really cool setup, almost like it's a funeral. Like a wake of sorts. It's actually kind of beautiful, isn't it? And talking with the lady, she did say it is authentic. It's an authentic casket from pre-Civil War. By the size of it, it looks to be that of a child's, doesn't it? Anything inside? Nope. That's beautiful, though. Very beautiful. Check out those coffin keys. Oh my god. I need this thing in our house. We need it, like, ASAP. There's even a little stand here of saged, ten dollars each, the bundles. Creepy mannequin, an old style dress. 
Also on display near the coffin are these beakers, these chemistry sets. Very neat. And right below it is a candelabra. Just look at these creepy pictures hanging on the walls. Very cool. Wonder who that lady is. That's awesome, right? Can't find a price tag on it, but the last time we were here, when we first found it, I do believe it was like a couple grand. So worth it. And if we had it, it'd be going home with us today. Can you imagine that thing strapped to the top of the Mini Cooper? Driving down the highway? I can. Oh, I can so imagine it. They even have a little section here devoted to funerary photography. Here's an old picture right here. What's it saying? A picture's worth a thousand words. It's sad, but yet at the same time, very beautiful. And here's a closer picture, a smaller picture, easier to look at, much darker and a lot more clearer. Oh, this is nice. Wow. I wonder who lives in that house. Can you imagine having a cemetery in the back of your own yard? Jessica, look at this one here. See, funeral photography used to be a big, big thing, especially over in Europe, mm -hmm. it's still a thing. Like, you can actually hire a photographer to photograph your funeral. Yeah, you do it now, I think it's illegal in the States. It's crazy. And I think we finally found what we're gonna buy here for $16. They have a mourning locket, which is basically a family member who's deceased, their hair gets put inside the locket. That's beautiful. Yep. It's ours. Along with the locket, I think we're gonna go ahead and go with these pictures as well. I think we're all set. Very cool. You can go ahead and check her out. Wherever I come, just come my way. Wherever I go, hard luck is that it stays. Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way. 